Hey ABC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to do a quick response to uh, Memphis Final Gym, the Mr. and the Mrs., their June contest before June is up here. Um, pretty kind of simple, but very, very good question. I think we've kind of done a similar thing in a thread before, too, which is kind of cool because it kind of gives us a chance to go back and revisit and throw some new things in the mix. But it was basically a, the perfect ten. And, I guess, and the way I kind of took what they were asking for is albums that you feel are perfect from top to bottom in terms of lyrics, um, uh, the, the, the songs themselves, the artwork, just kind of everything surrounding the album all together. So uh, let me kind of jump into some of the picks that I had. I won't, go, I won't talk a lot about every one of them, but some I'll just kind of flash and give a quick detail. Number one, uh, Woke Mother's Cosmic Egg, which came out in 2009 which in my opinion was in 2009 was Hard Rock Album of the Year or should have been. Uh, cover art I think is very, very cool, very strange. Um, songs, perfection, good trip back in the just good kind of uh, new spin on, on old riff type rock. I mean, so just everything about this album I absolutely love. That was, that was definitely a 10 in my book. Going back to old school hip hop, does not get any better than Houdini's Escape. That is a perfect 10 right there. From the, the artwork, which is kind of that traditional old school hip hop stuff, which is typically just the guys in the band on the cover, nothing too fancy. And uh, music wise, I mean, five minutes of funk, freaks come out at night, we are Houdini, friends, some of the best songs that hip hop has ever had. I mean, perfect, perfect album say the same thing here about uh, Public Enemy. You know, back in the mid-80s, late-80s, uh, you know, hip-hop started to kind of go its different directions in terms of, you know, some went more hardcore, some were going more the militant route, some were doing the Back to Africa thing and so forth, and uh, Public Enemy was one of the more militant route type of groups. And I think the cover itself really kind of portrays their image in that regard. I'm sure you can't see all the details there, but but then when it comes to the songs, I mean, all of them are perfect. And when it comes to the lyrics, nobody writes like Chuck D. Some of the stuff that he wrote on this album just still blows my mind to this day. So uh, definitely a perfect 10 as far as hip-hop album goes. This to me is also a perfect 10, and I'm sure I don't have to explain why. You know, all the songs on this album are absolutely great. I think if you listen to the song Landslide between musicianship, the lyrics, the delivery, everything else, just perfection, absolute perfection. Uh, this is one I think I might have shown before in a, a Perfect Ten type video, but I'll share it again. Sade's Love Deluxe. I think not only does this cover really capture her essence to me, but it also definitely captures the essence of what comes out of the lyrics and the music on this album which again is just very heartfelt, sensual type things. It's just very, very good stuff. So this album was certainly a perfect 10 for her, I think. Only thing that's not a 10 about it was the cost. <laughs> but, and for all those exact same reasons I was just saying for Sade, I think Washed Out, this album actually over the past couple of months has become the perfect 10 for me. Um, exact same thing. I think just a very, very even though it's a lot more upbeat than the Sade album, it's the same type of sensual feel and heartfelt feel that I get from this album. And this cover art completely and totally captures the emotions that, that come from the music on this. So it, it's a, they could not have done that any better whatsoever. It did, um, it did come on white vinyl, which I'm not as fond of. I actually wish it would have been maybe clear or black for some reason. I don't know, but still, that's a, a perfect 10, I think. Uh, the Stooges. This is one I would put in the perfect 10 category. Every single song on here I absolutely love. Well, maybe with the exception of We Will Fall. It's probably my only track I'm not extremely fond of on this. But the cover art is definitely classic. You know, it's kind of reminiscent of the, the Doors' first album cover. You know, that type of Maybe even kind of some Beatles flavor within that album cover with the way they're, they're shooting that. And so again, I think from top to bottom, 
pretty much a perfect album. This is one I shouldn't have pulled out because even though the lyrics are perfect, the music is perfect, the cover on this album is not the same as the cover on the 8-track that I have of this album, which is what I had many, 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 many years ago. But uh, this is Willie Neal Johnson and the Gospel Keynotes, my favorite gospel album. It's called Rise Again. And again, when I pulled it, I was thinking music and lyrics. I wasn't thinking about the cover. So this is technically more of a eight and a half, I think, with that cover. <laughs> uh, let's see. Next we have another one that's probably more of an eight and a half, I should say. And that is Heart's Bad Animal. And the reason I'm kind of downgrading this one right now in my head is eight and a half is because side two on here is okay music-wise. It's not spectacular. Side one is fantastic from front to back. I mean, every song is perfect. But uh, I always love the artwork on this album. As simple as it is, it's always something that's kind of giving me the, I always say, giving me the creeps a little bit, which is another way of me saying it kind of makes me feel something, especially when I listen to the song, like, I want you so bad, or wait for an answer, and looking at those, those that album cover, it, it does something. I don't know what that's about. So, again, because of side two, I'm probably going to give this more of an eight and a half and not really include it as a perfect ten. But back to perfect tens. And the Mr. and Mrs., I'm sure you knew I was going to pick this as a perfect 10 because I actually gave you this album as a gift because I told you it was a perfect 10 and everyone should own a copy. And that was John Coltrane's Love Supreme. Nothing I would change about this album. I absolutely love the artwork. Of course, the music is perfection. The only thing I would change about that is I wish I would have discovered it sooner. Um... Next here, and I use this one almost every time you ask about your favorite or the best or whatever else, so you guys have seen me show this album a million times, and I couldn't resist doing it again. Stone Temple Pilots Core, Perfection. To me, it was one of the, uh, the most powerful albums during that whole grun phase to come out. You know, you, you could throw Pearl Jam's 10 in there, and of course, you know, Nirvana's Nevermind and blah, blah, blah. But uh, I think from front to back, I appreciate this album a little more so than I appreciate those other two albums. Um, this to me was just everything that a, a hard rock grunge album at the time should have been. Lyrics, heaviness, production, just the whole nine. So that's certainly a perfect ten. Now the last one here, the last two, uh, these two albums, maybe you won't pop up for people as much because they are extremely mainstream type albums. And that's one thing that you definitely kind of notice with people sometimes, especially those that are maybe really, really into music or those that um, are big collectors like most of us are and so forth. Sometimes the more mainstream a band becomes, we tend to give it less credit for whatever reason. Like something is taken away from the band because they're mainstream. And... Uh, that's something I think that's never really affected me in that regard, but I think sometimes it just does become easy to forget about albums and skip over albums because bands become so mainstream. And I think the two of my perfect tens here, which are probably, I think, the two best tens out of the group, are both very mainstream albums. And number one would be Def Leppard's Hysteria. I mean, of course, everybody and their mom knows this album. Even people that hate Def Leppard know this album. They could probably actually sing a lyric or two off of some song off of it, even if they completely hate it. But, uh, you know, this is definitely one of those ones that that is... I'm sorry, keep making sure I run on my time here. Um, that is perfection. I mean, lyrics-wise, they were all over the place with it. There's some things in there of a political tone. There's some things in there that are just kind of your regular rock and roll. There's some heartfelt stuff. And then just kind of some creative stuff where, like everyone knows the lyric, of course, love is like a bomb, baby, come on, get it on. Well, if you actually know where that came from, they were just kind of speaking into these, I don't know if it was a megaphone or a PA system or something like that, just like random things. And they were just basically saying, what do you think you heard me say? And they were like, well, it sounded like you said love is like a bomb, and then boom, that becomes a lyric. So I think, again, when you look at the lyrics within this album, there's a lot of different elements of some serious stuff, some creative stuff, some 
you know, just straight rock stuff and everything in between. And we're not going to talk about production and what Mutt Lang did on this and the harmonies and the songs. And I mean, th this is just the perfect album. And artwork-wise, I mean, come on. You could spot that from a million miles away and know exactly what you're looking at. That, that, that cover has become etched into everyone's mind. So again, I think that is without question a perfect 10, uh, which based on how much money and time they spent producing that album, it better have been a perfect 10. But their goal with that was to make the, a hard rock thriller, is what their goal was, and I think they did it. This next album really kind of falls along the exact same lines that I was saying about all the mainstream stuff and everything else. And this is one that I think oftentimes is so easily forgotten about. But um, Princess Purple Rain, without question, this was the first album that came to mind when I thought about doing a Perfect Ten video. And again, it's one that we all know, you know, we recognize it if we see it, but I think it's so easy to let it get lost just in the history of music or whatever. But Prince tore it up on this album. I mean, artwork and his whole, you know, persona and everything else, I mean, Prince, that's just Prince being Prince. And of course, the flowers and everything and the purple jacket and all that is just so memorable. The, the artwork is completely classic. But even more so is really getting into the music. I mean... You listen to a song like Let's Go Crazy, completely guitar rock riff driven song, and obviously Prince can play, which then goes right into a song like Take Me With You, a synth type love song. I mean, really no guitars whatsoever. The Beautiful Ones, I have no idea how, what you label that song, if that's an R&B ballad, if that's, you know, who, who knows. Uh, Computer Blue, again, synth rock oriented type stuff. Purple Rain is more R&B gospel feel to it. Uh, what else? When Doves Cry, again, in a class all by itself. Baby I'm a Star, more pop, almost disco gospel type feel incorporated in that one too. I mean, you have to just really think about that. I mean, one artist went in that many directions, and I don't, not only did he go in that many directions, but he made almost every single one of those a hit. You know, that that's... To me, it's just that in and of itself makes this album perfection because there just aren't artists out there that can do that type of thing over the course of a career, much less incorporate it all within one album. And Prince totally knocked it out of the park with this one. So that's probably my, out of this group, the best ten out of all the tens. And one more I wanted to show was one I only have on CD here, which is Highway Robbery, For the Love of Money. I think this album is a perfect 10, too. I love that classic 70s artwork. I think this came out in 72. But uh, the music, too, if you guys are not familiar with this, just take, uh, what's the best way to describe it? Take Deep Purple and just metal Deep Purple up just a little bit back in the 70s, and you would have got Highway Robbery. So if you're not familiar with them and you love heavy riff, classic rock, make sure you, you check that one out. So anyway, uh, those are my perfect tens. Of course, I excluded a lot of things. You know, Cindy Lauper, She's So Unusual, EPMD, Strictly Business, uh, Van Halen, 5150, on and on and on. But I try to narrow it down a little bit and just show some maybe that I haven't shown before. But thanks, BC, and we will talk to you guys soon.